Welcome to Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt of the Marquardt Law Firm at MarquardtLawFirm.com. Welcome back to Talk Law Radio. I'm Todd Marquardt here on 9.30 a.m. The Answer. Also on podcasts everywhere. Uh, We're also live on Facebook right now. And later we'll be on YouTube. And so you can find me everywhere, really. And the reason that I do this is to help you discover your legal issue blind spots. And some of those blind spots are uh, what happens if you're incapacitated, but you don't have a power of attorney or a guardian? Or uh, what if you name your uh, granddaughter's ex-husband to be your agent under power of attorney? So we've been talking about this court case, uh, Natho versus uh, the state of Texas. And uh, Mr. Natho was an uh, agent for a woman named Miss Shelton. And he, uh, the power of attorney did not uh, authorize him to make gifts to himself, but he was doing that anyway, and that's what got him in trouble. Eventually, uh, Miss uh, Shelton's granddaughter found out what was going on. I think a concerned neighbor tracked her down, and uh, so the granddaughter went to an attorney and asked for help, and that uh, that attorney... Um, helped Miss Shelton revoke her power of attorney. Uh, it's not a permanent thing, so it, it can be re- revoked if the person has mental capacity to understand what that means. And so the attorney sent Natho a letter instructing him that he was no longer authorized to act for Shelton and asked him to return Ms. Shelton's property, including keys, bank information, and insurance policies. After Natho got that letter, he sold Ms. Shelton's car to a third party, and he cashed out the life insurance policy, cash value, and, um, and he used the money for himself. And so he was charged with misapplication of an elderly person's fiduciary property. And he was sentenced to 25 years imprisonment. Wow. So uh, this just goes to show you that when you name somebody as agent under power of attorney, this should be somebody who you trust, who's trustworthy, and who's going to act in your best interest. And uh, so if, if you're estranged from your family and, and friends, uh, you need to go make some new friends, some people that you trust. Or you can name a bank to be your agent under power of attorney sometimes. So the, the court said uh, the reason why this guy was going to be convicted uh, was because he was exercising authority, making gifts uh, when... Um, the document did not authorize him to do that. And Natho did have an attorney. Um, I don't know what happened between the two of them after this. I, I don't know if that attorney got in trouble or not. Let's talk a little bit about the applicable law here. In Texas, it's Title II, Chapter 752, Subchapter A, of the Texas Estates Code that includes the Durable Power of Attorney Act. Uh, Section 752.001 says, a person may use a statutory durable power of attorney to grant an agent powers with respect to a person's property and financial matters. We should all do that. Just in case we get in an accident on 1604, 410, 281, or 35, and we're not able to make decisions about our income, our assets, uh, signing contracts, or um, getting things done in a legal matter. The the other statute that I I looked up was Texas Penal Code Section 32.45B, which is uh, misapplication of fiduciary property. 
Let's see here. Oh, subsection A says fiduciary includes a trustee, guardian, administrator, executor, conservator, and receiver. It also includes attorney in fact or agent appointed under durable power of attorney. Uh, we used to call the agent attorney in fact. Um, a lot of people confuse that with attorney at law. And so I don't say attorney in fact, I just say agent, but it means the same thing. Misapply means deal with pro property contrary to an agreement under which the fiduciary holds the property or law prescribing the custody and disposition of the property. Okay, here's subsection B, the part that he violated. A person commits an offense if he intentionally, knowingly, or recklessly misapplies property he holds as a fiduciary or property of a financial institution in a manner that involves substantial risk of loss to the owner of the property or to a person for whose benefit the property is held. And so it could be a Class C misdemeanor if the value of property is under $100, a Class B if it's between $100 and $750, Class A if it's over $750 but less than $2,500, state jail felony if it's between $2,500 and $30,000, I wasn't clear um, which of those uh, they charged uh, Mr. Natho with uh, because the, the value of the property was somewhat in dispute. Hey, we have something new that our listeners can do. In addition, in addition to emailing me at host at talklawradio.com, you can call and leave a voicemail with your question. I have a new phone number for that. You don't have to call the radio station all the time. You can call at night on the weekends and uh, that number is 210-538-4770. Just leave a message uh, with your uh, legal question and I'll read it out on the air and other people can benefit from that knowledge as well. So I may not be able to get to reply to all questions individually. Um, and you just need to know by emailing your questions or leaving them on the, the voicemail line, you agree to having them published on TalkLawRadio.com. By submitting your story, you understand and agree that we may use your story or version of it in all media and platforms, including third parties. You also agree that the answer to your question is, is not going to be considered legal advice because we don't have an attorney-client relationship unless we agree to have one in writing. But we'll give you general information like we always do on the radio. I mentioned that I was in uh, continuing legal education last week uh, with a, a organization called uh, NALA, which is the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys. We have a chapter here in Texas, and the, the membership is composed of attorneys in private and public sectors, as well as judges, professors, and students. Uh, the organization serves to provide its members with continuing legal education programs, conferences, networking events, and newsletters on a broad range of elder law and special needs planning topics. So we talked about the two court cases that I learned about when I was there. I also learned some things about applications and appeals. Um, we learned some things about qualified funds, uh, tax deferred retirement accounts, getting qualified for Medicaid benefits. You should also know that there's a, a home care program that Medicaid pays for called Star Plus Waiver, and uh, it's a little bit more challenging to get qualified for because even if you meet all the qualification eligibility requirements, there's a wait list. And so you're, you have to find somebody to take care of you during that time that you're on the wait list. Also, 
something you should be aware of is that some people that have farms and ranches can still get qualified for benefits or if they're running a business. So contact an elder law attorney if that's of interest to you. We're in the fourth segment now, and uh, we're about to end the show, so you know what that means. And now, it's time for the Talk Law Radio Legacy Spotlight. What's your legacy? Sponsored by Marquardt Law Firm. Today for the legacy segment, I want to talk about an article I read by author Danny Heifetz, who wrote an article in The Ringer about the lasting legacy of Kobe Bryant's Mamba mentality. You might remember that Kobe Bryant, the famous NBA basketball star, and his 13-year-old daughter, Gianna, died in a helicopter crash. They had been flying with seven others. Uh, They were on the way to a youth basketball tournament near Los Angeles. Um, But the reason we're uh, talking about his legacy today is because of his book called uh, Mamba Mentality, How I Play, the book that he wrote before he passed away. Well, he started thinking about this when he tore his Achilles tendon in a game against the Golden State Warriors in April 2013. Um, even when that happened, he, he was fouled. He went to the free throw line and sank two shots before hobbling off the court. And he called uh, overcoming that injury his personal Mount Everest. And what gave him this idea to compare himself to the, the, the Mamba was uh, the, the movie by Quentin Tarantino uh, called Kill Bill Volume 2. In 2004, uh, the, that's when that film was released, a character is rummaging through a suitcase full of money only to discover that a black mamba is hiding in the briefcase. So if you want to see an entertaining YouTube video, you should search for that. And um, I don't know exactly how his um, mamba mentality relates to that, but I'm sure he writes about it in his book. The Mamba Mentality, How I Play. I'm going to be reading it. Um, The summary for the book says it's his Uh, Kobe Bryant's personal perspective on his life and career on the basketball court and his exceptional insightful style of playing the game. A fitting legacy from the late Los Angeles Lakers superstar. Thank you for joining us today for Talk Law Radio. Next week we're going to be talking about taxes so you'll want to stay tuned for that. Talk to you later. This has been Talk Law Radio with attorney Todd Marquardt, brought to you by the Marquardt Law Firm. You can learn more at marquardtlawfirm.com and be sure to listen to the full Talk Law Radio show Saturday mornings at 11 on 930 AM, The Answer. Each week, attorney Todd Marquardt talks about the law. His mission with the Talk Law Radio Show and Podcast is to help you discover your legal issue blind spots. In the beginning, God had one law. Don't eat from the fruit of that tree. Then came the Ten Commandments. Now we have federal, state, and municipal lawmakers that won't stop creating new laws. Laws that might impact you without you knowing it. Listen to the show and drop a line on Facebook or email host at talklawradio.com and let the hosts know what you think of the show, the topics you want to hear, and whether you want to be a guest.